Hey guys, welcome back to Unity Gurus. In this video, we'll learn how to lighten exterior scene using Unity's high definition render pipeline. You will also learn how to use real time GI or real time global illumination for lighting exterior scene. So, with that said, let's begin. Before I start, I want to tell you that for this demo, I'm gonna use this floating city asset pack from Unity Asset Store. It is available for $5. It comes with more than 300 prefab with proper LODs. It also has 4K high resolution texture. So if you want to check it out, I will give a link in the description. Okay, so let's begin. Let's begin to already bold the atom. Okay, I have already downloaded the package and imported in an empty Unity project. Before we start the lighting process, first we need to implement the high definition render pipeline. To do that, go to Windows, Package Manager, click on Show Preview Packages, and choose this high definition RP and click on Install button. It will take some time to install. I have already shown this process many times in my previous videos. If you already know this process, you can skip this part. Once the package is installed, right click, create, rendering and high definition render pipeline asset. I call this HDRP. Then go to edit, project settings, graphics and choose this HDRP asset here. And it will convert everything to pink and it also giving us warning about gamma color mode. But don't worry, we'll fix this in a minute. If you're using 2019.1 or earlier, you can use Render Pipeline Wizard to fix all the problem in one go. To do that, go to Windows, Analysis, Render Pipeline Wizard, and click on this Fix All button. It will fix everything for you. It will ask you to create an SD default scene. Just click Create one. And you can see now everything is fixed. But you see our scene is still looking pink. To fix this, go to edit, render pipeline and select this upgrade project materials to high definition materials. Click on proceed and this will automatically convert all the standard materials to high definition materials. And also it will take some time. Here I want to tell you one more thing that it only convert the high standard materials. If you are using any third party or custom shaders, then there are chances that it may not convert those materials to high definition materials. In that situation, you need to manually convert those materials. Alright, now we are back to normal. I have downloaded all these HDRI from HDRI Heaven website. I will give a link in the description of this website and I have imported them as a cube map. Let's first add an HDRI in our scene. To do that, right click, rendering and click on scene setting. This will automatically create a volume component with a visual environment where you can change your sky. So right now it's using procedural sky. So change this procedural to HDRI and from this add override button, add an HDRI sky component. Click all and from this cube map slot, choose the HDRI which we have just imported. So for this demo, I'm going to use this one. And also make sure from this static lighting sky script, change the sky type from procedural to HDRI. And now it's automatically generated ambient lighting according to the HDRI sky we are using. Next, set your direction light. For this scene, I will make it look like a morning light scene. So I'm moving my sky light a little bit lower and also increase this intensity to 12. Change the mode from mix to real time because we are going to use real time GI for this demo. From the shadows, increase the resolution to 2048 to get the better looking shadows. So now our scene is looking a little bit better. Our shadows are looking perfect. Next, select all the assets and from this drop down panel, set them to lightmap static and reflection prop static. If you are using 2019.2 or newer, then you need to set them as contribute GI. <laughs> Next, to capture the proper reflection, we need to create a reflection prop because right now it's only reflecting the sky environment. To create a reflection prop, right click light and click on this reflection prop. Place this reflection into the center area and increase the box size. Make sure to cover the whole area in your reflection prop. One more thing I want to tell you that you need to create multiple reflection prop to capture the reflection on different areas. For example, you can create one reflection prop here, one at here, one here and one here to capture reflection on different areas. But for time being, I'm only creating one reflection prop because we are mainly focusing on this area. Now you see our reflection is completely grey. To capture the reflection, click on this bake button. And now you can see that our reflection prop is reflecting our environment. And you can also see a subtle change in the reflection if I turn on and off this reflection prop. 
okay now it's time to bake the real time gi for our scene to do that go to lighting panel which you can access from windows rendering and light setting for this demo i'm gonna use real time gi you can use big gi if you want but since i covered big gi many times in my previous video for this demo i'm gonna use this real time gi you can use this big gi if you want before bake the real time gi we need to make sure that all of the object in our scene have light map uvs i don't know whether the designer made a separate light map uvs for all of the object but to be on the safe side i enable this generate light map uvs for all of the objects okay it's done now next click on this real time gi and set the resolution to 1 because 2 is very high and also change the direction mode to non directional so that we can bake the light map a little bit faster and click on this generate button to generate light maps as you can see it has already started generating the light maps it will take some time depending upon the system configuration okay now it's baked it took about like 20 minutes to bake the light map and you can check this light maps by going this real time light map tab and you can see all of these real time light maps since this scene is really big so there are a lot of them you can also check the real time light maps by going in this scene mode and click on this indirect disable this show resolution option and you can see that we are getting decent global illumination even though it's very low quality because we haven't used any higher settings so you can bake your light map on higher settings i want to show you one more cool thing about these light maps if you have seen my previous video then you already know about it now if i change my environment cube map this real time gi will automatically adjust according to the new hdri you can see the color and the illumination is automatically changing that's why this real time gi is very powerful even though it takes a long to bake but once it's baked it can give you great amount of flexibility in your lighting however there is one problem with our scene you can see that checker size on these mountains are smaller than this checker size on these huts and houses that's why it's taking more space in our light maps and we don't even need them in our scene so to get better quality and to save some light map space we can disable the option of light map static or we can lower the resolution so for now i'm going to disable them in light map static you can also disable some far object like this ship and these stones if your player is not going to interact with them or you can decrease the size and resolution so to save some resolution select this ship and decrease the light map resolution to 0 0.2 and increase the light map resolution for the object which are more visible in your scene for example like this huts and this props which are more close to the camera so let's try beginning light map one more time this time i've set the resolution to 2 and choosing the directional mode and click on generate light map obviously this will take longer to bake but this will provide you much better quality hey guys welcome back to unity gurus oh wait wait it's the same video sorry sorry okay so finally our light map is baked and this time i use directional mode so if i go to this scene mode and go to directionality you can see that then additional directional map is also baked and this is our indirect map which is looking really nice we are definitely getting much more details than the previous one this is the albedo map which is used by real type global illumination this has basic color information about our scene you can see it is similar to our scene and our scene is start looking pretty much nice we are getting nice details and everything okay one more thing i'm missing that uh, there is no water underneath it i want to tell you that the water doesn't come with this package so you need to import that separately or you need to download from asset store i have made a water shader so let me quickly import that one so i have made it a water shader in hdrp using shader graph so let's apply this water material to our plane even though it's not looking that great but yeah it will work fine for this scene okay so let's keep it for now so last thing that is remaining is the post processing to further increase the quality of our scene so to implement post processing i make an empty game object i call it post process then apply a volume component on it select is global and from this profile click on new and from this add override button you can apply all kind of post processing effects first let's apply anti-aliasing in our scene to do that go to your camera and from this anti-aliasing choose temporal anti-aliasing so the edges in our scene are looking much smoother next in the post processing 
The first effect I want to apply is the white balance. In this white balance setting, if you move the slider to the left, it will make the image look cooler and if you move it to right, it will make image warm. So for the morning look, I want the image to look like slightly warm. Next I want to apply tone mapping. Click on overwrite and in the post processing and select tone mapping. Obviously you can choose ACES. Even though our scene is now looking dark, but it's much more natural. To slightly increase the brightness, click on this add overwrite button, lighting and indirect lighting controller. And from here you can control the indirect lighting in your scene. The next effect I want to apply is the lift gamma gain. This will require a little bit testing to achieve the look you want. Next apply shadows, midtone and highlights. Here you can separately tweak the colors of your shadows and highlights. The next thing I want to add is the micro shadows which will basically enhance our shadows. So if you look in these areas, if I enable this one, if I enable the shadows, you will get much better contact shadows. You see? Next I'm gonna add ambient occlusion to further improvise the contact shadows. You can see this in regions our contact shadow is much better. You see after adding ambient occlusion our scene is looking a little bit dark. To adjust the exposure, add color adjustment. Here you can set the exposure and contrast for your scene. Next add bloom to add glow in our scene. Let's add some vignette to darken the edges of our camera view. And finally let's add fog which is really missing in the scene. Click on this volumetric fog. Click on enable. First set the distance to zero. Right now it's not working because we need to change the setting. Go into your scene setting and from this fog type choose volumetric fog. So now you can see the fog is all over our scene. Again go to post process and now slightly increase the fog distance. Change the color slightly bluish. You can see the fog is definitely adding some realism in our scene. You can always tweak this parameter to achieve the better result. Let's add an FPS controller and see how it looks. And you can see that our scene is looking very nice. It's pretty nice. The GI is very nice. Even though there's some problem with the LOD, you can see that this object is bright. But you can fix that. That is a problem of due to LOD. You need to increase the LOD distance. Our water is also looking very nice, by the way. I will be keep making feature on HDRP in future. I will be keep making more videos on HDRP to explain this high definition pipeline even more in detail. And if you really want, and if you, and if you want to, and if you really want, to, come on. And if you really want me help to grow this channel, you can support me on Patreon. On, come on, forget it. No one does that. Okay. See you in the next video. Bye bye.